The president. Members, Article 3 legislation is the constitutional duty of the entire Hong Kong SAR. We have already been dragging so that uh, we can ensure national security is safeguarded effectively as soon as possible. Government Bill first reading. Safeguarding National Security Bill. Second reading. Secretary for Security. President, I move the second reading of the Safeguarding National Security Bill. To implement the constitutional duty as stipulated under Article 23 of the Basic Law, the decision of the National People's Congress on establishing and improving the legal system and enforcement mechanisms for the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region to safeguard national security, that is the 528 decision, and the Hong Kong National Security Law, Hong Kong NSL. The Hong Kong SAL government hereby introduces the Safeguarding National Security Bill, the bill into this council. For this is an utmostly important step for, for the Hong Kong SAR to establish a legal system and enforcement mechanism and in, to ensure the effective safeguarding of national security. Article 23 of the Basic Law stipulates that the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region shall enact laws on its own to prohibit any act of treason, secession, sedition, subversion against Central People's Government, or theft of state secrets to prohibit foreign political organizations or bodies from conducting political activities in the region, and to prohibit political organizations or bodies of the region from establishing ties with foreign political bodies or organizations. Article 3 of the 528 decision and Article 7 of the Hong Kong SAR emphasize clearly that the Hong Kong SAR must complete legislation for safeguarding national security as early as possible and must improve the legal system and enforcement mechanism for safeguarding national security. The Hong Kong SAR must therefore enact the legislation early as possible to fulfill its um, constitutional duty. There is also a genuine and urgent need to legislate for Article 23. The Hong Kong SAR has gone through the unbly experience of having our national, our national security seriously threatened, especially during the Hong Kong version of color revolution and black clad violence in 2018. The geopolitics have been increasingly complex and national security risks remain imminent. The, me the means to take and taken to and they can come in many different forms and the forms and the threat can emerge all of a sudden. Therefore, the government must complete the legislative work as soon as legislative work as soon as possible. But the national security. The earlier we complete the legislative work, the sooner we can work, the sooner we can say guard, uh, uh, we can guard against national security risks. Having considered the content, content, the implementation experience and culture in relation to the Hong Kong SAR, Hong SAR and other relevant laws in safeguarding national security, the relevant laws and, and implementation experience of our country and other countries, actual circumstances in recent years, recent years in the Hong Kong SAR, the SRSR government has formulated an effectical proposal. We conduct, conducted public consultation from the 30th of January to the 20th of this year on legislating for Article for Article 23. We held close to 30 consultation sessions. We also disseminated, disseminated other publicity materials and information because we want the public to learn about, learn about the content of the proposal and to, and to encourage the public to give their views. During the public consultation, 
we received supportive, positive views in 98.6% of the submissions. This shows that there is strong public for the legislative exercise. The Security Bureau and the Department of Justice, Justice have been working speedily in re to analyze and consi consider views received from the, public, from the public consultation so that we could completing of the bill. The Chief, the Chief Executive in Council decided yesterday of March to gazette the bill, bill and introduce the bill to the Legislative Council today to complete the legislative work as soon as, work as, soon as possible. The Chief Executive, the President of the Legislative Council, the Council suggesting that the Council to speedily commence the scrutiny of the bill and consider such means as, con as convening a special Council meeting for the first and second, second reading and convening bills, bills committee meetings as early as possible, recognizing the bill and completing the legislative, the legislative process at full speed. With the f full support of the President of the Council, we are able to, are able to introduce the bill to the first and second reading, reading in this Council. We, al we also have the legislation. The committee, committee will become a bills committee this afternoon and will proceed with the scrutiny of the bill at once. The arrangement is testimony to the concerted effort of the Hong Kong SAR executive and legislature in completing the legislative exercise as soon as possible. The SAR government is most grateful to the council. The Proposals in the bill adopt the following principles. One, the highest principle of the policy of one country, two systems, is to safeguard national security, sovereignty, and development interests. Two, human rights are to be respected and protected. The rights and freedoms, including the freedoms of speech, of the press, and of publication, the freedoms of association, of assembly, of procession, and of demonstration, enjoyed under the basic law, the provisions of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, and the International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights, as applied to the Hong Kong SAR, are to be protected in accordance with the law, and free. For acts and activities endangering national security, there must be adherence to active prevention in accordance with the principle of the rule of law and suppression and punishment in accordance with the law. The bill covers the following aspects. The a bill covers the preamble to state the legislative intent, the legal basis and the duty of the Hong Kong SAR to safeguard national security. Apart from the preamble, there are nine parts to the bill. Part one is preliminary that covers the principles and interpretation of the bill. Parts 2 to 6 cover the proposed offences and the relevant provisions. They cover relevant provisions to improve upon existing legislation and also uh, relevant provisions on newly proposed offences to effectively prevent, curb and punish various acts and um, and activities that endanger national security having regard to the actual circumstances and needs of Hong Kong. The five parts cover various offences, including Part 2, treason, etc. Part 3, insurrection, incitement to mutiny and disaffection and acts with seditious intention, etc. Part 4, offences in connection with state secrets and espionage. Part 5, sabotage, endangering national security, etc. Part 6, external interference and organizations engaging in activities endangering national security. Part 7 of the bill, enforcement, powers and procedure and legal actions, etc., in connection with safeguarding national security. Part 8 mm, covers mechanisms for safeguarding national security and relevant protections. Part 9 of the bill includes uh, related amendments mainly on the necessary adaptation and corresponding amendments to relevant provisions in existing legislation. These proposals are spelled out in detail in paragraphs 10 to 70 of the Legislative Council brief. I would like to point out in particular that the bill has provided clear definition for various offences with appropriate exceptions and defence. And also, in accordance with the general principles of the criminal law, there is need to prove mens rea for the relevant offences. There is a need to prove that the defendant in 
uh, carrying out acts or activities that endanger national security have intention, knowledge, or act recklessly. And the uh, and innocent people will not be caught by the law inadvertently. During the consultation period, we received various views and suggestions on the scope of uh, application of uh, individual offences, persons to whom the bill applies, penalty, defence, and so on. The uh, offences in the bill are based on the proposed offences in the consultation document, and there is further refinement of the reference uh, offences, including the penalties. On the uh, power of enforcement, um, judicial proceedings, and other in legal system uh, measures in relation to legal system and enforcement mechanisms of, um, and safeguarding national security, they are put forward after careful and cautious consideration. Um, then all the necessary conditions are listed out carefully. And, and there is also restrictions on uh, powers given to different um, enforcement bodies. So the above um, measures all show that uh, we uh, every, every intention to protect human rights un under the basic lo law. And uh, we have prepared a document on the relationship between safeguarding national security and protecting human rights that's at annex to the Legislative Council brief. Uh, this afternoon, we look forward to explaining to members further the details of the bill at the Reference Bills Committee meeting. We will fully support the work of the Bills Committee in uh, completing the, legislation, uh, the, uh, cons the deliberations early. On behalf of the SL government, I must thank the Council for its full support and cooperation. The, under the uh, House Committee, a subcommittee was set up speedily. Three meetings were held to consider fully policy matters in relation to the proposed uh, legislation. Uh, leg to the legislative proposals, and the subcommittee put forward various invaluable comments that's of, that are of immense help to our drafting of the bill. Uh, with these remarks, I ask members to support the Safeguarding National Security Bill, and I hope that you will complete the legislative exercise as soon as possible. The earlier, the better. Thank you. I now propose a question to you that the aforesaid bill be read a second time. In accordance with the rules of procedure, the second reading debate is adjourned and the bill is referred to the House Committee. I now adjourn the Council until 11 a.m. on Wednesday, the 13th of March, 2024.